So you're saddled and ready to go. Now exactly where do you place the effects and all the stuff you have with you on campaign ready to ride out here in a few minutes. We'll take a look at the manual. We'll take a look at uh, experiential archeology span and see the best way to pack your effects. So whether it was Cook's Point Sets or Cogden's Compendium, they all basically say the same thing and use the following text. Place the overcoat on the front of the saddle, lining down pocket towards the rear. Buckle the center strap so tightly that the coat cannot touch the withers. Then buckle the other straps as tightly as possible. Fasten the blanket to the cantle in the same manner. The curry comb brush and extra horseshoes, etc., should be carried in the saddlebags. The nose bag, when used, may be attached to the off side of the pommel. The haversack may be attached to the pommel on the near side, and the canteen should never be attached to the saddle. The effect should always be removed before the saddle is taken from the horse. So that's what the manual says. You'll notice that there's a lot of things missing, if you will, from where to put certain things. So for instance, where do you put your picket line and your picket pin? Where do you put your gum blanket or your poncho? There's a lot of things that aren't specified. And as far as I can tell, it's not in Poinsettes, it's not in Cooks, it's not in Cogden's, uh, and it's not in any other manual or suggested kind of uh, field manual that I've read so far. Therefore, it's based on experiential archaeology and what you as a trooper want to do. If you haven't already, please check out our video on how to roll the great coat. Uh, but one thing I would suggest, whether it's rolling your great coat or rolling your uh, your blanket, uh, I recommend putting your your gum blanket or your poncho on the ground to keep your other clothing and your other effects, especially the cloth effects, from getting all the thorns and thistles and sticks and stuff like that in there. And it helps it just as a nice clean uh, table, basically, if you will, to uh, be able to roll your great coat, your your blanket, uh, and your other effects in a nice you know nice neat area. So with that, I'm. I'm going to go ahead to uh, roll the great coat. We'll speed it up a little bit. And if you haven't uh, figured out how to roll the great coat, please again click on the uh, the card that I'm going to post right here on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube and you're on Facebook, go over to YouTube, click on the card, watch our video on how to roll the great coat. Here we go. All right, there we go. One thing that we'll, uh, I'll note, like I said in the other video, is that uh, if you roll a great coat right, it doesn't stay together near as well as a blanket stays together. So once you roll it, keep it nice and tight before letting go and make sure the straps on the saddle are good to go. One thing I make sure before I put my coat strap on is my center strap is actually straight and ready to go. So like the manual says, I go ahead, place the overcoat in the middle, cloth side or lining side down, make sure my coat strap is straight. I do the center one first, and like the manual says, you want to make sure that that center strap is as tight as possible, and what it does when it's tight is it brings that coat off of the bottom, up off, and uh, it kind of takes its weight off the withers of the horse and doesn't touch the horse. It shouldn't touch the horse. Uh, keep in mind that if you roll this right, your great coat should be about 30 inches in length. A lot of reenactors actually roll their great coat way too small, way too tight, way too short. And what that does is that, that basically just uh, makes this big ball, uh, big mess that is not designed to be carried on the saddle. And again, you want to get it as tight as possible. Uh, I mean, really, what that does, that keeps it nice and snug and doesn't allow anything to actually come undone. And one thing that's been documented in photographs is uh, either twisting or rolling the loose ends of your coat straps to keep, keep, again, keep them nice, tight, high and tight, not out of the way, flop it around, kind of like we talked about the latigo and uh, the straps below the girth. Now, as you can see here, actually, it got kind of sloppy. Uh, my great coat is not, not the six inches it needs to be, but this is about what it should look like as far as nice around, you know, six to eight inches falling over the, the end of the horse. You do not want a big ball, like the, like if you roll it the infantry way, uh, nice and tight and short, uh, it's, not, it's gonna be a big ball to where you can't get the coat straps designed for the McClellan saddle. You won't be able to get the coat straps down from the, the pommel up over the side, back over, and have it hold that great coat. So now we've got the great coat on, let's go ahead and throw the blanket on the cantle of the saddle, like Cogden's Poinsettes and Cook says. 
All right, so I got my blanket rolled. Uh, and if you don't know how to roll your blanket, again, check out our uh, video that we have that on that. I'll put a card on that if you're on YouTube. Uh, click on the card that pops up right now and we'll get that taken care of for you. But once you have your blanket rolled and your coat straps are actually laid out, the first thing you do is get it centered on the palm or the cantle of the saddle and get that center strap nice and tight. And again, you want these as tight as possible uh, with the buckle, if, if you can, right on top, centered uh, and coiled up. These ones, these coat straps are a little bit newer, a uh, little bit uh, not worn in. So uh, it takes a little bit more effort to coil these up to where they actually stay nice and tight. And just like on the other side, we go ahead, make sure we do the left side or the near side, get it centered, again, nice and tight. And once it's tight, as tight as you can without ripping the coat straps in half, and go ahead and coil the coat straps. Now, if you look at how I coil these, I go through the end of the buckle actually twice to where it actually stays tight and doesn't come undone, uh, especially even with uh, loose or really old coat straps. All right, so we're almost ready, but there's a few things that aren't specified by the manual, whether it's Cogdens or Poinsettes or Cooks or anything. Uh, so one of those things is the lariat or the picket rope, if you will, then the picket pin that we talked about in previous episodes, and of course, at least the gum blanket or the poncho. Where exactly do you put these effects? So the first one out of those that we're going to talk about is the poncho or gum blanket. Uh, since there's no specified place to put this, really goes back to when do you want it, how do you want it, when and how often, how quick do you want it. Uh, for those of you who have ponchos, especially you know in the cavalry service that were issued to quite frequently, uh, then there's you know there's strong encouragement to actually post it and fold it up and put it on top of your your overcoat or on your pommel so you can gain access to it when it rains when you're on horseback. Personally, I like my gum blanket. On my poncho on my cantle on my blanket protecting it keeping it dry you know as, mu as much as that's worth so what we do is I just take my poncho or my gum blanket and I just fold it in half like so and then fold that in half keep keeping this first width okay I just fold that in half uh, and kind of keep a keep folding it in half till you get something that can lay over the cantle of the saddle so once you have something like this, then I, you can put this on the front or the back, whatever you wish. So if you notice, I already have my blanket and my overcoat already on my saddle, so I'm gonna have to undo my coat straps to make sure this works. Now, one thing, you, if you do this, if you forget something and you need to put it on after the fact, you don't want uh, all three straps uh, loose at one time. So I recommend loosening the outside ones putting your extra thing, or in this case, whether it's a shell trap, or in this case, like I said, the gum blanket or the poncho, put the poncho over that, tighten the outside ones, then go in the middle and do that to where there's, you always have 100% tie off at all times and you don't lose something if your horse tends to walk off or spook uh, or your great coat comes unraveled. So again, let's watch us put that on. So now the only thing really we have left that's part of the campaign uh, equipage is our lariat or picket rope and of course our picket pin. Uh, if you look on our previous episode again, and if you're on YouTube, go ahead and click on the card that pops up right now and that'll show you kind of the lariat and the picket pin together and the story behind it and a little bit about where they go. But again, kind of reviewing where exactly do these go? If you read some of the uh, supplementary material that was available during the Civil War, uh, one of the suggestions was to put the lariat on the near side pommel pin. Uh, again, very similar to, I guess, Cowboys of the Day, except on the other side, on the near side, not the off side, but it was looped in kind of a lariat type fashion, kind of loose on that pommel side. Personally, from experiential archaeology and not having it loose and, and kind of, I, I like things nice and tight, high and tight. Uh, what I do is I roll this into a nice tight roll with a pick pin right in the middle with the lariat going through it to keep it nice and secure. 
So what that looks like is I start with the lariat going through uh, the spliced end right here making a loop, and then all I do is I go the length of the picket pin right here, and I just accordion it back and forth uh, until you have the majority of the rope. Again, you have a 30 foot lariat. 30 feet actually is not that long when you start coiling it up, and you wanna save enough room to actually be able to coil it um, the, about the full length of it. So that's that looks about good right there. So what I'm gonna do now is actually start looping it over starting from the the uh, ground part of the pin or the pin, the, the point of the pin uh, up to the top. So what that looks like is I'm gonna start over here like this with a loose end and just wrap it. And again, you want to go over like that. The first loop goes over and then you just as tight as you can make nice tight sections all the way down through the pin. And what this does is again, it keeps everything nice and tight to where it doesn't come undone through miles and miles of uh, you know hard riding up and down you know creeks and pastures, uh, even jumping over fences or, or barrels or whatever you're doing. Uh, it keeps a nice uh, tight aspect to your lariat. Now when you get to the end, as you see, I'm getting to the end here pretty quick. What I do with my loose end, which is why I actually have that loop on the end, I actually go through as many of the loops that I created. Okay, going through there. And then the last loop I go through is the spliced end of that lariat. Goes through right there, come up, and there you have it. So now the question is, where exactly do we put this thing? Uh, again, you can really put it wherever is comfortable for you. So in considering the offside, you take a look, we have, our, we have a great coat and blanket, and of course our nose bag, as we've kind of was already put on, uh, but we put it on the offside, on the pommel, that's already there. You already have your saddlebags and blanket here. Uh, so again, the, the offside might already be too uh, crowded, especially with your carbine and carbine thimble on this side as well. So let's take a look at the other side. So now that we're here on the near side of the side we saddle on, let's take a look at how much room we have. Again, so we're gonna have our saber on this side, obviously, but we don't have a nose bag to peed us here. Uh, really, there's not a whole lot here unless you're gonna put your haversack. So that's another thing we haven't talked about. Again, me personally, I like to keep my haversack and everything on me, so I ride with that. But if you wanna put your haversack on there, uh, you can stick it on the pommel, like the manual says, or the candle. Again, experiential archeology, span once you know, kind of put it wherever. And then that's what's nice about Cogden's Cavalry Companion is that that compendium published in 1864 is actually a letter to the cavalry troopers talking about what they have been doing for the past three years okay uh, so really anything goes again it specifies don't put your canteen on the saddle what does that mean that means authentically guys were putting their canteens on the saddle some were some weren't really goes back to what type of trooper would you have been are you a rule follower are you a rule breaker do you just do whatever you want to do as long as it's comfortable even if it breaks the rules whoever you are as a person now use that and your uh, equipage when you saddle up whether you put your canteen on you or on your person if you like to follow the rules or you don't like to follow the rules you got got freedom here when it comes to that. So today, based on what we talked about, I'm gonna go ahead and decide to put it on the near side pommel. So what I'm gonna do as far as this picket rope, I'm gonna kind of undo it just a little bit, keep it going through the, through the loops there, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is take it out of the, the spliced end of the lariat, kind of take it out of that, but still through all the other loops to keep it nice and tight. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, loose end that's still kind of secured through the loops, go up through the pommel ring, okay? down through those loops again, kind of hit as many loops as you can just to secure it. And just tie uh, a granny knot or overhand knot or a square knot uh, to, to secure it. And that's how you pack all your equipage, minus of course the haversack and the canteen that we talked about. But well, for today, well, forget Cogden's, I'm gonna put my canteen on my saddle. So we'll go ahead, secure it on the saddle, on the pommel there, over the overcoat. Put it down, just like that. You know, it gets heavy over some miles. 
Uh, so I appreciate you guys watching. Hope this helped a little bit. If you have any comments or questions, again, a lot of this is up to interpretation. A lot of this is up to your preference. Uh, please comment below. We appreciate your watching. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification bell to receive uh, notifications when we post videos. And as always, we'll see you in the field and ride hard.